Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. My name is Joel Duggan and this is the Friday Lego Let's Chat. We're building set 75382, which is the Ultimate Collector Series TIE Interceptor from Lego Star Wars. This is, I want to say, the sixth or seventh week we've been working on this. Obviously we've come quite a way. Uh, last time we put on the main section of the right wing. And I would imagine we're probably going to be doing the same thing on this side today. So a bit of a repeat of last week, but hey, the people are different. I'm the same, but uh, we'll see what's going on. You know, you probably can't see it from the video, but uh, it's tilting a little bit that way on the stand. And I think that's just because of the extra weight here, because it does sit straight if I push it. And I think once we get the other side on, it'll be a little bit more even. The stand is a little bit wobbly. I'm, I might look up kind of like an aftermarket solution to that, but for now, we'll just keep on keeping on. Uh, I'm probably gonna move this out of the way. I don't remember needing it right away last week. So we'll just start with bag lucky number 13. How's everyone doing today? Hope you're having a good Friday. It's been a beautiful week here, all week in Nova Scotia, at least in Dartmouth. It's been, it did rain a little bit, but it was raining at night uh, or early morning. The afternoons have been sunny. I've eaten, say Friday, I think I've eaten three out of four meals outside on the balcony at like seven o'clock at night. So that's good. It's definitely been warm walking home from the gym. It, we're finally at that point now where it's uh, it's cooler in the gym than it is outside. So when I leave the gym, it's actually a, a warmer walk home. Sometimes than I would like, because I'm already hot from being in a long workout. Deja vu with these colors. Remember this from last time. Looking into the 90s, says J. Christ. Yeah, we're only in the 80s. And that's fine. The 90s can stay in the 90s. That goes both for the year 1990 as well as 
as well as the uh, the temperature. Not a fan of the hot the hot weather. Which, as a Canadian, I'm sure you are shocked. I'm going to try something a little bit different today. I'm going to... Normally I have the book, and I use the book to, like, line things up. But I'm going to use the book to line things up, and then I'm going to move the book. I have definitely nudged my table, so... There's definitely... Definitely crooked. Yeah, that doesn't look straight at all. Which way? That way, maybe. We'll see, I have a very tiny, tiny monitor on the camera. A little bit crooked. Maybe that will be better. It looks straight to me on the table, but it, uh, I don't want it to go like at an angle on the camera, which it does look like. The book definitely started us off on the right foot, but we'll see. Sometimes it's like it's nice to experiment a little bit, see what we can come up with. I thought I would just have more room for pieces, and then at the end, more room for the book. Book manual, probably manual. Proper terms. Don't know why I did a George Lucas impression just then, but hey, here we are. More nudges needed? Is it still crooked? There's probably a delay on stream. I say probably, there always is. I remember all these noodly little bits. Great detail, not complaining. Just takes a long time to sort out. Also realizing just how sore my fingers are from playing guitar all the time. Pressing on the little hard plastic pieces. You're like, oh yeah. That's pretty straight. How are you getting on with the guitar? Uh, I don't want to say I'm frustrated. I, I think one of the biggest issues I have is I have big hands. And it's an acoustic guitar, so on top of needing the strength to play it, because it's got a, not necessarily a higher action, but it requires a stronger action than an electric guitar. Uh, it is 
there are a couple of chords that are just straight up impossible. And I don't want that to sound defeatist, but like I can't fit four fingers into a G chord and not mute other strings. They're like, there's, ju there's just not a space to put my hand. So that part has been frustrating. I mean, you can get away with it. You can get away with a three finger G chord and it's, it's okay. Uh, but I'm also someone that likes to do things like, you know, the, the right way. So that's been frustrating. But, I mean, that said, I'm getting faster at the chords that I can hit or how I can hit the chords at transitioning from, like, E minor to G, G to C. D, D is a chord I just can't seem to switch to yet. And, and that's, that's practice. That, see, that's, that's the part where I'm like, okay, well, I'm not hitting it right now, but that's not anyone's fault but my own. Like, that's just, that just needs time in chair and practice, right? And I get that. Uh... The issue that I have is when it's just like, you know, your four fingers go in this space. And he's like, nope, that, that's not, I can't, that's not possible. <laughs> it's not something I can do. How do we want to do this? When in doubt, space them out. I did learn a couple of chords that are like two finger chords because one of the beginner guitar lessons that I took on YouTube said like, hey, look, don't don't try to do this crazy, you know, C major seventh or whatever it is. Don't don't come at me if I've got that wrong. But like, d don't try this right off the bat. Here's a simple two finger version of a G chord. Here's a simple two version, two finger version of a C chord. Use those, learn those, get your switching and your dexterity up and then learn the proper one. And so if I can hit the proper one okay, I tend to use the proper chord. But if it's if it's something that I can at least get most of the way there, I'll try. But uh the D chord is another one where I just can't fit three fingers in that space. Like it's these three fingers for the D chord, however that goes. And it just, I can't get it in there. Now, I might I might talk to the guy that I um, rented the guitar from and just kind of see, because I really like the guitar and I really like the sound, but if there's a guitar that's similar that has maybe a wider neck, you know, um, where most people wouldn't want that, I, I might benefit from it. Do we have any guitar players here in chat out of curiosity? Mind Trip Media with the Lurk and the 100 Bits. Thanks very much. Sorry I missed that a couple of minutes ago. Valdair, thanks for the Lurk. Appreciate it. Fazu Battlecaster, good to see you. Even when I was young, says Fazu, 
uh, controlling my fingers for certain chords is horrible. I should mention that I did play bass guitar through um, high school and university. I played in a band in university. We just you know played coffee houses and covered covered the Beatles, Radiohead, Green Day, just anything that we can kind of work into the instruments that we had. But um, I played bass, so and I I mean most of that in my brain is gone. Like I I don't have a lot of that memorized. I still know a major scale and I still know my pentatonic scale, but it's not much use to me when I'm learning chords on a guitar. So I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants in that way. We're a little crooked, but we're not too bad. I guess I could probably go with these first. I'm enjoying the process. Like it's really cool to have the guitar hit a chord properly switch i think the a little bit of a click happened when i switched between two chords back and forth i think successfully and didn't really have to think about it too much and i think again following the advice of one of the instructors i can't remember her name off the top of my head but i quite like the way that she teaches however there's a bit of homework and a, and a bit of restriction saying okay i've taught you four chords and now you're not allowed to learn any more chords until you can play these at like 100 beats a minute. And I was like, I get her point. I see it. It's not very fun. But I'm also a grown up and I'm perfectly capable of putting in the homework. So I just, I haven't, um, I haven't had, since that lesson, I've had time to do some exercises and I've had time to just kind of practice the chords that I can hit. But I've not really had a lot of time to like sit down and just hammer transitions for like an hour you know like I, I just haven't had that that time but i've picked it up every day and even if it's only been 15 minutes i've certainly logged logged the 15. One of the tricky parts is that the times that I have had the opportunity, it's been late at night. And unlike an electric guitar, it's a little difficult to practice on the acoustic quietly. And so I'm in an apartment building and it's summertime. So not only are my windows open, but so are most other people's. So at 10.30 at night, like I wasn't really going to go jamming hard on the guitar. And I do find it's tricky. Something I noticed about my, my practice just the other day was that I was having trouble with my picking hand and I realized this because I was being too quiet. Like I was trying to be, I was being self-conscious about making too much noise or playing poorly when other people could hear me, which I got to get over quickly. Uh, so I'm, I'm hoping to, to just, pre well, one, pract I can practice during the day when there's no one else home most of the time. Voldaire says, I have a three-quarter guitar that my daughter picked up, but her hands are too small for it. It sits in the corner waiting for the day. I take it out and give it a go. Hey, I say give it a go, Voldaire. If it's a three-quarter guitar, though, and you're a grown person, I feel like your hands are also going to be big. Or big in relation to the guitar, I should say. And it's not like my guitar is small. My guitar is a standard dreadnought. Like it's, it's a, I say my, it's rented. I'm planning on buying it. Um, either it, the exact model that I have, or the exact guitar that I have rather, or a brand new model of that one. Thirteen. So I think this works out a little bit better for space maybe in terms of area although 
the book is long and large. Um, yeah, so the it's it's I believe, and I've got to talk to Cody from Long and McQuaid about this, but I believe that this car guitar was part of their rental fleet, so this guitar has been rented out to people before, and that's why it's at a discounted price. And I could buy this exact guitar. There is a little bit of, you know, there's a little nick here and there in it, um, some dents and whatnot. Nothing major, nothing major at all. Um, and honestly, when I start to talk about it, it is the only time I actually remember it, because when you're looking at it, you really can't see most of them. Uh, I could spend the money on a brand new one. I would get the exact same make and model probably from, from Simon and Patrick. It's a Simon and Patrick songsmith in bourbon burst. Uh, I don't know whether I put it in my discord, but if anybody is in my, is in the spawn chunks discord, there's a link to it there somewhere. Uh, I'll see if I can grab it on the next break. I'll post it in chat. I really like the way that it sounds. All right, bag 13, here we go. Yeah, I really like the way that it sounds uh, and I like the way that it looks, it's very pretty. But I'm, I'm hoping that the recommendation is not like, you need to get a bigger guitar <laughs> because you're a large human. Something else I really need to do is, is find, and I think I found one through school.com, S-K-O-O-L. Uh, I think it's a free community for people that are new to guitars, and I think that would also be beneficial. So if I'm having beginner woes, I can just get some tips. Although, again, I have to say, uh, and I wish I could remember her name. I'll try to remember to look that up on break as well, but the the person that I was taking a couple of lessons from online. She also had some good tips for like, by the way, this is usually the, fi like for example, on the D chord, the ring finger, I think was the finger that she flagged is like, this is the finger that people has the most trouble with. Not only is it hard to control uh, and put pressure on, but it's also the one that you end up like muting other strings with. And so I was like, all right, well, that's, that's fair. That's exactly the trouble that I'm having. Um, what is happening here? Those are the wrong pieces. Last Jordan, good to see you. Kiwi, be good. You as well. I haven't uh, got to the point where I'm learning a song yet. And I think that's the other thing. I, I looked one up and it seemed pretty straightforward and it was not. And it's one of those things where I think I understand the, the transitions and I understand the, like the beat, but then when you actually try to play along with somebody um, and there was a YouTuber that I, I shared in 
the Spawn Chunks Discord as well. That was somebody that I was following. Uh, she does a lot of play alongs. A lot of, I mean, I, do, I, I haven't tried any of the Taylor Swift stuff. I was actually the Noah. Oh gosh, I can't remember the guy's last name. Stick Season is the name of the song. Anyway, she does a play along with Stick Season. She doesn't do any of the fancy finger picking. She just does the chords. But even then, it's in your head. It's the beat of the song but when you actually see it done and then realize as you attempt to even strum along the basics you're like okay this is a lot faster than i thought and and that's just like the amateur brain not realizing how quickly you have to make those transitions and all that stuff and plus the chords that are in that song are not chords that i knew and some of them require four fingers and it sounds a little bit funny if you don't use the four fingers and so that is a problem because like I, I just I can't hit those chords there's just not like there's just not enough room and it sounds really terrible if I attempt it so but again like that's I'm sure that I've chosen a song just to just to try knowing for well that I'm brand new and I probably ended up choosing a song that was really really hard without like really knowing it that one yeah it goes off the edge though I really like their use of smooth plates in the TIE fighter or the TIE interceptor. They've got a few studs here and there, but it's just the right amount so far. And the solar panel pieces having studs on them makes sense because it gives them that, that solar panel kind of texture. But I like that all this is very smooth with the exception of like very specific studs. So I guess word to the wise, a lot of the Lego Let's Chats the next little while are probably going to be heavily guitar centric. I hope I've got this rented for a month. So at the end of the month, I'm either going to spend the money to buy it or spend the money to buy a new one or give up entirely. But I, I don't see that happening. I'm probably just going to, I think, I think what happens is if, if I find that I'm not progressing as well or if i'm finding it frustrating and i'm not sure if it's something that i'm really going to be able to keep up then i will probably still buy the guitar because it is it is fun to play around um, but i will more than likely just get the used guitar and not not buy brand brand new as i mean i can afford both but it's it's a 40 percent difference should i decide to just get the uh the used one Noah Khan, that's it. Thank you very much. Super, super fast. Yeah. Good song. Fun song. And again, the I was just trying to strum along with the very basics. And and what I I wasn't even trying to strum the rhythm. I was just trying to hit the whole notes as she was switching. So when she hit, you know. I can't remember. It was a capoed song. So when she hit what was essentially a G for like four or five rhythm beats, I all I was trying to do was just hit the one, hit it the once, and then switch to the next one. And that even that I found pretty challenging. So, But again, that's me being brand new. I am generally a pretty patient person. And I think that's, and that's where I can get that difference of experience in the guitar is that if I'm not getting it and I can tell that it's possible, I just need time, I'm fine. I'm fine with the practice. I'm fine with the time in. I'm fine with the investment. That's fine. But if it's something where it's like, okay, I've attempted this at the slowest speed possible. I'm looking like hunched over the guitar attempting this thing. And it just like there just isn't room for my fingers. That's when I'm just like, all right, that's... That's frustrating because there's nothing I could do about that. I 
I really like these details, these layers of different angles. Creates that nice gap. Cool. I'll write all the all the back details. I think that goes there. Tiny pieces, big hands. I've had enough <laughs> big hand woes this week. I don't need Lego to remind me that I'm a large human. I mean, outside of these very specific cases, I don't mind being a large human. It certainly makes throwing weight around at the gym a lot easier. All six of these. Oh, right. I remember these go in the cracks. These were really difficult to place last time. You'll notice this week I'm probably using my thumb a lot because the tips of my fingers are sore. I remember that from playing bass as well. My fingers used to get sore because bass strings are really hard. Thankfully, I wasn't doing chords on the bass. I wish I had learned both at the time. I had the opportunity to, and I decided to stick with bass because my good friend at the time, Scott, well, it's just, we're still good friends. We've been friends for 35 years. Um, but he was, he was playing six string electric. So me playing bass meant that it was more fun to jam together. So that's what I did. That goes upside down there. These I remember being very difficult to put on. They're just hard to hold. Cool. Another one of these little dudes. These. I know I mentioned this last time, but it's very cool 
that they've decided to add so much detail to the underside. It's overlooked in a lot of Lego sets. Specifically like the play sets, which I get, I mean, I get. You're wanting to keep the cost low for those. But these UCS sets, like when you're paying two to $300 for a set, I, I think that you should just go for broke. And I think the people that are paying that kind of money will absolutely appreciate that level of effort and detail. I remember this being tricky last time too. Oh, we got it first try. Got it first try. Now I've kind of ruined it. I don't think I just put a mark in that. I might have. Yes, I am turning it around. <laughs> I am that guy. It costs me a lot of time, but I also think it's one of the reasons I've been able to do the things that I do artistically. <laughs> because, because of that. Me turning that piece around that had a scuff on it. Which is like the size of my thumbnail. Like just, just the tip. <laughs> Uh, is that everything? That's everything in that step. No pink pieces in this bag. No. Not that I saw. I definitely use tweezers for the stickers, but I think we're done with the stickers. I've not got into the, the Technic stuff, J. Christ. I, um, there's something about the exposed way that they look that it's just not quite my thing. I like the vehicles though. I like the Land Rover and there was one other vehicle recently that I thought was cool looking. I also like the, the retro radio, the retro transistor radio. I think I like the ones that don't hide the fact that they're Lego, but then also still very much look like the thing they're trying to represent. Did I get ahead of myself there? No. There we go. Yeah, the radio set is really neat. I like the fact that you can put your phone into it. I think that's cool although not practical if you need to use your phone for anything during the day or during whatever you're doing but if you're just sitting there listening to a podcast and you don't want to be distracted i have often picked up my phone and checked something on social media um when i've been listening to a podcast and then had to rewind the podcast and be just like well i didn't quite catch that We used every part of the buffalo this time around, no spares. That 
That's a really fun little detail. Little wire thing that goes in there. I'm assuming it's like a fishing rod or something. No, I guess maybe it's just a little rebel that they've used on different different sets, but I quite like it. Cool. That is bag number 13 done. I think what I'll do, because 14 is just a little tiny one, I'll lay out 14, and then we'll take a break then. 155. Now here, that feels crooked to me. Yeah. Overcompensating. Like them for the racing cars, especially the Formula One racing sets. A friend of mine got together with a group of uh, their friends and bought someone a Formula One Lego set. The birthday boy really liked it, but he was already a Formula One fan, so. I guess it all depends on what you're into, right? Like if you're super into Star Wars and you might be forgiving of how the Star Wars sets are put together. And then if you're super into something else, then. The kind of thing that I wish that we had when I was a kid, like the Ninjago sets, Ninjaga, Ninjago, I can't remember how, what is this, an A or an O, I think it's an A. Um, not something that I'm into now, because there's like a cartoon or something that goes with it, but like, if I was 10, I would have been all over that. Because they're cool looking, but you know, because they don't really represent anything that I am aware of, or am familiar with, fan of, then they don't really speak to me, I guess. It's funny, you'd think with all this fine motor movement, I guess this is my right hand on the Lego stuff, you'd think that I'd be a little bit faster at learning the guitar.
you probably can't see it on camera, but there's a weird air bubble in the vinyl, like right there. I can feel it with the pieces. I normally don't work right to left, but what the heck? Why not? Little pieces are always the hardest to line up. I agree with being a fan of things that helps with Lego sets, says J. Chris. I have been a fan of Formula One since Senna was a driver. I also have a bunch of the Star Wars sets, but not the USS, UCS ones. Those are pretty expensive. Yeah, they are. That's right. I've actually, I've stopped buying the small sets. I'd rather spend the money on a big one and take the time to put it together. So there's a trade-off there. Someone in my Discord posted today that there is a... Uh, Transformers Bumblebee set from the Lego Icons line now. That's cool. And then the next thing we all mentioned was like, you know, are they going, is Megatron next, you know? One could, uh, one could assume and one could hope. My, my comment was that I'm surprised they didn't go right for Megatron, but Megatron's a big set and they might be waiting for like Christmas or something. I hope they do it. Um, I wonder if they want to see whether like the Bumblebee sales c pick up or catch on or I don't know. How, I don't know how well the Optimus Prime did. That's something you never really get. You never really get the reports from from Lego to say like these were successful sets. These were not successful sets. It's not like downloads or show ratings and stuff like that i don't know that i've seen very many lego reviews where the lego person is is slamming the set like i i can't recall a time where someone was just like the set is too expensive and it wasn't fun to put together don't buy it like i don't i don't ever remember seeing that from anyone not saying it doesn't happen but saying it happens rarely enough where I obviously didn't catch it. All right. I am going to take that short break, as I often do at the top of the hour. It's just a few minutes early today, but that's right. We'll be back in five or six minutes with more Lego Let's Chat stuff. If you want, there is a tweet and an Instagram story. If you'd like to share that we're live and bring in a couple of friends, uh, I will also try to grab those links for folks as well.
right, we're back. And I have the links to everything in the chat here on uh, Twitch. But if you're listening to this or watching this later on YouTube, then Lauren Bateman, L-A-U-R-E-N Bateman, on YouTube is one of the guitar instructors I'm following. I listened to the Stick Season by Noah Kahan play along by Nina Shelby Music. Nina Shelby Music on YouTube. Uh, the link to the Lego Bumblebee set is in the chat, although you can find that, I'm sure, just on the Lego website, lego.ca. And then I put an image of the Simon and Patrick guitar that I'm playing on in chat as well. Again, something you can easily look up either on Google or YouTube. It's a Simon and Patrick Songsmith Bourbon Burst. And Bourbon Burst is just the name of the color, which is like a brown color with like a light spot on the bottom with a, a white turtle shell. Uh, Pickguard. I like it. It's a cool looking guitar. Uh, better than your kind of standard pine beige guitar with black accents. I much, much prefer the Bourbon Burst. I need my book. Starting off with the colors. I'm curious as to whether this will be even slightly different than the, the one we did last time. I mean, it should look the same. I just wonder if they'll use a slightly different method. Probably not. Everything is so tiny. I find it strange working upside down with Lego 2. Like by default, I end up holding the piece right side up, but then I have to turn it around. Thought this was a cool use of shovels in the design. I remember mentioning that last time. Because that's what these are, minifig shovels for shoveling your imaginary, imaginary Lego snow, or I guess Lego dirt, possibly. I don't know the waffle bacon meme, if it's a meme. So sorry if I'm not getting your reference. go did anybody watch the uh, Xbox summer games showcase I have to say, 
that I really appreciate the fact that Xbox does very little now in terms of hosted events. It was just straight up a talk from Phil Spencer. It was maybe 10 minutes. I don't even think it was that long. And then they just dropped right into trailer after trailer after trailer. Sometimes with a little interruption from, from to hear from the developer of that game that you just watched the trailer for. But there was no cringy host making terrible jokes. It was It was really cool. It was really cool. Oh, did I forget to put this one on? I think I forgot to put this one on at the last step. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, there's a couple of games that I'm interested in. I don't know if I'd stream them, but certainly for playing on Xbox. So this, you guys can barely see that. Goes on the back. And then this goes on the front. Very snug. And just of curiosity, yeah, with a little adjustment, it sits right. It sits evenly. Just had to nudge it a little bit, but it stays level, which makes sense because, like, that's not a small amount of Lego that we just put on that side, right? But I really like the way that that looks. Oh, right. I remember this part now. I'm going to move this stuff over here. I know that's kind of going off the screen, but I feel like give us the best view. Deja vu, I remember these pieces now. I wonder what bag 15 is going to be. I don't recognize any of that. We might be able to do, we might be doing something new with bag 15, which would be nice. It would be nice to just not have a repeat of, of last week. I really like how these pieces go on. These little black grip pieces are how these attach. The main, main body, it's really cool. You basically make this chunk and then just slide it into place.
these I wish were centered. They're something that you have to slide into the center spot. It'd be more, I think, satisfying if they snapped onto a center point. Right, so those little red pieces that we put in, which I think you can see, maybe you can't. There's a little red piece just right in there. And that's what this connects to. We have one more bit to go on the bottom. There. And there. And then just connects like this. And it's very snug, doesn't wobble, goes exactly where it's supposed to go. Very cool. I quite enjoy that. Such a neat way to add, I'm assuming, just a very specific length. And of course, interior detail. I don't, you can't see that off screen, but if I tip it this way, you can see the detail all on there. It's very cool. This is why I buy the UC assets. This is this is the satisfaction I get from them for sure. What's next on the Lego journey? Asks Dan. Uh, I have um, a set that Grandpa Crafter sent, which is a my very first time building in my own creation. So it was something that Grandpa Crafter designed based off of my uh, gate, my main gate build on the Citadel. So that's next. And I have to double check when that Bumblebee is is going to be available. Um, I thought I was going to buy that transistor radio, but now that that Bumblebee is up, I might I might get that instead. I've been uh, watching a lot of YouTube and, and reading Ramit Sethi's book on I Can Teach You to Be Rich. And it's less about like teaching someone how to make money it's more about rethinking how you spend or save specifically he tends to preach a lot about spending more and like why wait until you're 65 to enjoy all the money that you've earned and uh, i can definitely see his point so uh, as someone that does not spend a lot on himself um obviously i was just talking earlier about buying a guitar um that's actually one of the things that um that kind of prompted me to look at the lego and look at the guitar again which was just like yeah you know what why if i want to learn the guitar why would i wait until i've achieved other goals when it's something that I can work into my goals now and so it was just an interesting kind of reframe on prioritizing different things I also oh gosh his name is Steven I can't remember his last name god oh, it's gonna bug me can someone look up the host of diary of the CEO I always blank on his last name I quite like him he's very smart and he was on, um, the links are above in chat, Dan, but you can also, um, just Google Bumblebee Lego, I guess. Stephen Bartlett, Crosshatch, thank you. Gosh, why can't I ever remember his last name? Stephen Bartlett, very, very talented podcaster. Quite enjoy it. Really highly recommend uh, Diary of a CEO. I, you know, adult content warning, they talk about not anything vulgar. It's just like it's, it's mature subject matter in terms of it's the kind of things adults tend to deal with as opposed to kids. Um, anyway, uh, Stephen was on another show. And again, I'm blanking on her name as well. Pat something. Anyway, um, what is going on here? And he was talking about one of the things that really helped him was the ability to differentiate 
between A and B decisions and to make B decisions as quickly as possible. And I thought, I skipped a page somewhere. Yeah, it's because that page looks exactly the same. Um, A decisions are like big, big, big decisions that you tend to have either large repercussions from or things that you cannot undo, you know? Um, for example, uh, if you got a dog and you were going to get their ears clipped, like a Doberman or a um, an American bully, that is not something you can undo. That is an A decision. That is something that you should weigh very heavily, something that you can consider very seriously, all that kind of stuff. You know, big, big life things like that. Um, I'm using a dog as an example just because dogs have been on my brain and it's a really good example of not being able to, you can't undo that. <laughs> you can't grow the dog's ears back. Uh, by the way, don't clip your ears, folks. It's not not good. Um, that's my opinion, of course. If you like them that way, then you do you. Um, but anyway, the B decisions are things like renting a guitar, buying a guitar, buying a Lego set, um, provided it's not, you know, putting yourself into a, a situation that's untenable. Um, you know, you're not being irresponsible, but it's like, if it's within your means and you're just like, well, maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. That's a B decision. You know, for example, I could always pick up the guitar for a year, decide I don't like it and sell the guitar. You know, worst case scenario, I tried something and I learned, you know, that I either could or couldn't do it. And that alone as information is, is just really, really invaluable. And Stephen Bartlett was talking in the context of business decisions. He was saying that people in business that he deals with that make B decisions quite quickly are ten, they tend to be more successful because they don't wait. If they think, well, we can try this market and if it doesn't work, then we can get out of the market. <clears throat> no big deal. It's worth knowing that we could not do it rather than not trying and realizing we could have made you know, a lot of money <laughs> had we actually just got in there as fast as possible, right? Um, I'm not talking about the stock market. I'm talking about like, you know, entering into a new kind of business. Like, you know, maybe you're a golf, a golf course or a golf something, and then you decide to start making golf balls or you decide to start making golf carts or like whatever that happens to be. And, but it's not your normal, like golf course, golf membership business. You just, it's tertiary, but it's not the same, you know, maybe you get into real estate, whatever. Um, his point was like, if you've got B decisions, you should make those as fast as possible. And I thought it was a really interesting conversation. This is not going where I want it to go. The other one went in so easily. Oh, it's because the piece isn't pushed down. Frustrating part is when you have to put a lot of pressure on these pieces, you tend to move stuff. Should just go in nice and easy like that. Two little bits left over. We already did that piece. Bag 15. Cool. Yeah, it was a fairly recent podcast. If I can remember the name. Do I have my phone handy? I think. Oh, sorry. I just banged my mic stand. Uh, the name of the podcast that he was a guest on. Mel Robbins. The Mel Robbins podcast, M E L Robbins. He was a guest on her podcast, and it was episode. I don't think I have the episode still downloaded, but 
you'll be able to find it. It was the most recent time she spoke with Stephen Bartlett on the Mel Robbins podcast. Worth a listen. 100% worth a listen. All right, I guess we have to slide this out of the way again. Sort of. One sixty seven. Mdog95 resubscribed at tier one, 34 months. Welcome in, Mdog. Hope you're doing well. This bag shouldn't take too long. Lots of big pieces. I don't know if I realized that there was different sizes of these triangle pieces. Normally they're all the same angle. This should be interesting. I hadn't looked, but I was assuming that the panels on the main wings were going to be larger pieces, but I'm happy to be wrong. Not bad. Not perfectly straight, but not bad. Oh, we've even got the edge pieces. That's cool. Some gross looking colors there. But no pink, so I'll call it a win. M-Dog says, I just finished watching Fallout last night. Uh, I just finished editing the Fallout episode that Steven and I recorded. Unfortunately, that was recorded very early in May, so I'm very late publishing that for the Citadel Cafe. But it is edited now, and I should be putting it up on the website either today or tomorrow. So it should be on your podcast feeds or before the weekend. The plan, the plan is to do it before the weekend. I do have some cleaning and some other stuff I have to get done tonight but they're 
there will be new podcast stuff happening soon. Like a weird optical illusion, one of those pieces feel like they're bent. Kind of a weird layout, but a lot of weird pieces. Again, small bag. The big tomato, hello, welcome in. Uh, what did I say, 160 something? I say it out loud every time. And every time, I forget it. It was 167. Aha. Noticing a lot of the pieces lately have had these little white dots on them from the casting. Most of the time it doesn't matter, of course, because they're, they're snapped all together, but every now and then they do show up on the surface. Right away. Flipping it over. And then that's the big piece. Big piece, one of those. This is, a, I imagine, I'm going to go together quite quickly. Yep. This is the size of piece I thought we were going to be dealing with most of the time. This is going to be large. So I've got two of these, one of those, and one of these, and these last two bits. Yeah, when I say large, I'm not kidding. I 
Helena Blake, as uh, as they covered in chat, this is the UCS TIE Interceptor. It's also in the title of the video. Or title of the stream, I guess I should say. Square piece goes like that. They do keep it interesting by adding the colors. I have to say, if this was all black, it would be a little bit, a little bit bizarre. I'm surprised that these don't overlap to the next piece, though. I'm sure it will all be structural in the end, but another one of those. Okay, I start to see the angle now. I see what they're putting down. Curious how they're going to cover up all these colors, though. I'm trying not to look too often at the, the box. It is right in front of me. But I'm trying to be surprised. That goes in here, and then two of these go down this way. I'm running out of room. It's longer? Wow. That's wild. this oh my gosh this goes here that goes there yeah I'm I'm gonna have to get a bigger living room <laughs> jeez I really hope you can't see these colors when it's all said and done. Well, this is only half the construction. We're not even going to be able really to finish this bit. This goes there. Time to move. <laughs> you need more Lego. Yep. I got, I got news for you. It was time to move a long time ago. Easier said than done, unfortunately. For those wondering, just look up the real estate market in Canada. You will understand immediately what I mean. All right, so there is going to be a layer obviously above this. That is pretty cool. Bag 16. If 16 doesn't have a lot of pieces in it, I'm tempted to do it right now.
It does not. We will do we will do one more bag. It's only a small bag. One eighty one. What I should do is get a bookmark. That would make more sense. It's a weird little bag. Normally they they cut very different. Those are pretty unique pieces. These are always fun. I'm impressed that these wings are going to be as thick as they are. A little ray gun piece, that's cool. Which of these little lightsaber hilt pieces? It's really fun that they use the lightsaber hilt on the Lego ship design. I'm not sure what the lightsaber hilt was to begin with, whether it was designed specifically for lightsabers or whether it's a, a piece that was adopted. Let's go down side here. like this is all over the place today. Not bad. Certainly done better. Oh, 
Oh, the Nookie. Sorry to hear that you're sick. That sucks. Hopefully it's nothing too serious. You're back on your feet before you know it. I was sick for the first time around my birthday in April. Uh, first time in, gosh, probably pre-pandemic. Like, I, I had not been sick in a very, very long time. The benefits of all the caution that we have now in our own daily lives with post-pandemic mentality, but then also just working from home. You know, I just, I, I'm not exposed to a lot of people. No kids. I guess the the most exposure I get to other people is at the gym, but that's also a bunch of health conscious people who probably wouldn't be there if they were sick. And then on top of that, it's a pretty polite gym. Uh, most people take the time to wipe down the equipment after they use it. So unless you're really close to somebody, the chances are pretty slim you're going to catch something. Which, I mean, I'm guessing that's also probably where I got sick. It was that time of year, that chilly April, rainy. Not that that has anything to do with getting sick. But you certainly feel more miserable <laughs> when the weather is crappy. But on, I, I guess on the plus side, uh, you're not, uh, you don't feel like you're missing anything. Don't mind being sick if it's crappy outside, I'm not missing a sunny day. Although, if I was sick, I could just as easily sit on my balcony and read as I could watch TV. Another bizarre, bizarre layout. Starting off with the tiny bits. Oh, I see. That's why that little curve is there. That's that's unique. I've not seen that before. Using the curve piece to allow for the hinge. Maybe the cover pieces for the four wing. I'm not exactly sure. I think this is. It could be. I'm. I'm sure it's probably the the cover, the top parts, and then I think this edge. I think is what we're doing. I think these hinges are going to go around this corner. That's my guess. Like I said, I like the fact that they're using a lot of plates to finish this particular build would have taken a long time to work out these angles and these lengths Yeah, my guess is that this is going to go that way. Again, so much of these UCS sets are um, lots of lots of plates stacked on top of each other because they need such very specific um, 
I guess width depth probably depth is the better better use of the design term and then we're back to using this again so we've got this goes there I quite like this idea of using this arc piece to accommodate the uh, the hinge that's cool just when you think it can't get any longer it gets longer So like I said, I wasn't kidding when I, th I said I needed a, a larger living room. All right, how does this start? It looks like it starts with the short one. Single stud, I'm assuming on purpose. Even if it's just decor, I like the fact that they've selected it, you know? I needed two of those. That's beefy looking. So this goes sandwiched in between there. And then here. Wow. That is slick. That fits perfectly. Wow, that's really cool. It's a little, a little flimsy, but I'm assuming it'll be connected to other things in a minute here. Big piece goes in the corner. Does that go right up against the side there? Yeah, it looks like it does. Yeah, so this is going to line up with the bottom black plates, not the stuff on top. So it's going to completely cover it. This was all just for spacing and adding some depth. Again, like three plates deep as opposed to a full brick. Just the kind of stuff that they've tended to do with these sets over the years. Not just not just the UCS sets, but like Optimus Prime, the icon set was like this. There's a lot of sets that have this, that level of like stacking plates. Man, this is beefy, I'm impressed. I wasn't sure, you know, when I when I first ordered this, I thought, you know, it looks really cool. I really didn't like the look of the UCS TIE Fighter from years ago. I hope they revisit it because if they, if they revisit it with this level of design, I think it would be worth worth building. So this little piece goes in the corner. See what I mean with the studs being part of the um, the solar panel makes a lot of sense. Gives a lot of texture, contrasting. Pardon me, contrasting to the the smoothness along the edge. Uh, the Nookie says, I really like the addition of the video format of the Spawn Chunks podcast. Very nice to see you too. Well, that's very cool. Thanks. I'm glad you like it. Uh, I'm definitely out of my comfort zone. As you can tell, I'm not on camera here on Twitch very often, uh, if at all. But uh, I appreciate that. I'm glad that you like it. I'm hoping it brings in more, more viewers and listeners. I, we really want to grow the show. We've been kind of, I don't want to say stuck, but we've been growing very, very slowly the last 12, 6 to 12 months. 
and I would really like to um, to increase the growth rate of the show. So if you're listening to this and you're a fan of the Spawn Chunks, please tell friends about the show. I would very much appreciate it. One of these, two of those. They go where I thought they were going to go, which is cool. And one of these. Goes there. Clamps that in place. This goes this way, and that stud actually has a purpose, which is cool, as does the other one. Nice little detail. These are nice touches, too. Single plates, asymmetrical, like that. Ah, uh, here's the security. Connecting a lot of this stuff together. Where does this go now? That. Doesn't really help the edge bit. It's a little bit more secure. That. Oh, this really gets built up. That's a lot beefier than I thought it was going to be. I think I've probably said that three times now. So that's just a mirror of what we did on the front there. Not quite the same position, but the same same distance that way. Seems like a sort of a good way to bring in small sprinkles of content out there to draw new people in. Yeah, so one of the reasons we're going to be, uh, we're hoping to bring in more people is that we will be uh, using the video format to also create social media clips of the spawn chunks. That way, and that goes like this. So we want to post, you know, funny moments or poignant moments from the show on things like TikTok and Instagram, that kind of thing. Now, one of these, one of those, one of those, and one of those. Technical terms for people not following along. So this touches there. And then this goes in that space. Hopefully there's more going on than just that. Yes, okay, so this goes into the end here. Oh, that's cool. Wait a minute. Yeah, that's right. And then this connects this way.
Yeah, that seems strange. I really don't like how flimsy these are at the moment. Does that go up this way? Yeah. They're both flimsy. Like you just you can't put any pressure on them. And this is still not connected. I also feel like I'm missing a piece. So that just goes right on. That's the base of the wing. Yeah, that's an odd choice. For me. Yeah, that looks really strange. Uh, yeah, it's just resting there. Weird. And it's, there's nothing to clamp those on either. Where did this other piece go? Did I miss it on the top? I mean, you'd think it would go there. Oh, it goes on after you rotate it. Okay. Okay. Uh, I guess we have two bits left over. Now we assemble. And that's it for that bag. Okay. This is the lower right wing. I'm not sure if you can hear outside. It's really windy here all of a sudden. Oh, I just broke something off. Again, there's nowhere to put your hands. Satisfying click. Got it. Put that down to there, and then you put this in there. Wow. Well, if it wasn't listing to one side before, <laughs> it sure is now. Now, what just came off here? That little piece, where does that go? I can't see. There we go. Well, there's the full length. Hold on, let me move the book. The Nookie subscribed to Tier 1, 11 months. That's amazing. Thank you ever so much. Very appreciate that. Very much appreciate that. So, is that, that's all in the shot, right? Just about. That is, that's, that's long. I don't think it fits this way. Oh, it might because of the angle. Nope. There's the tip. 
There's the back. That's wild. This is going to be uh, this is going to be interesting because again, it's very much leaning to the left now because this this is a big piece of Lego that we just put on here, and so we'll have to put another one on here. I'm assuming we'll probably put the bottom one on this side, and then we'll do the tops. I would I'm assuming that's how they would do it. Uh, man, that's something. It's very close to the stand. Like, I can barely put my finger between the wing and the stand. I'm not sure if I like that. But maybe when it stands up, it'll be a little bit farther. And this is where they could have put, I think, some more detail. We had all the cool detail in the back of these panels that you can't really see, but then you can see all of this. And I feel like they could have probably put more of that kind of detail on this but that also could be a weight problem too anyway thanks so much for hanging out today folks i need to uh pass you along probably to tadpole milk playing some minecraft i think you'll enjoy the rest of your day i appreciate the support uh thank you in advance for watching the spawn chunks or listening to it or listening to the citadel cafe and for sharing those podcasts with your friends i appreciate that as well I'll be back tomorrow at 1 o'clock Atlantic. That's UTC minus three hours for some Minecraft. We'll be back in the pumpkin farm on uh, the West Hill build on Citadel. You can, of course, check out all the things I do at joelduggan.com as well as patreon.com slash joelduggan. That's where you can join the Discord. Less than $2 a month. Support my streaming and my content work and uh, get to hang out with a bunch of like-minded, cool people. I will see you folks tomorrow. Enjoy your time with Tadpole Milk. Thanks very much. Bye for now.